My dear sisters and brothers, good morning. It is a great day to praise the Lord on this cloudy, a little bit uh, warm uh, Sunday morning. And we want to welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of you who are watching us this morning, or you perhaps will watch the service later on the day or during the week. So all of you are welcome to praise our God. This morning, we have a, I am very excited. We have a great announcement. You already see it, you already watch it, you probably already read uh, that we will begin in-person worship next Sunday at 9 a.m. So all the information has been sent to you. We have produced a video tour uh, for you to watch and you get familiar what to expect and how the sanctuary is going to look like as you come in next Sunday. However, there are a few uh, reminders we want to make for you to keep in mind every week. And the first one is that you're going to have to RSVP every week by Thursday mornings. Every week, RSVP by Thursday morning on the Sunday you're going to attend. You have to do that every week so we can have control of the flow and the capacity that we have in the sanctuary. The second reminder that you need to keep in mind every week is that the doors will open at 8.35 a.m. The door will be open 8.35 a.m. And we will invite you and ask you to wear masks the entire time you are in the building. Do not take the mask off as you come into the sanctuary. So we're taking a leap of faith. We're doing this together. So we provide a service in person with you, and you will wear a mask as you are in the building. The fourth reminder for you to keep in mind every week is we will not practice singing. We will be listening. You probably are invited to come, to come if you wish, but we will not have congregational singing. So keep those things in mind as we prepare for in-person worship beginning next week. Keep us in prayer. Pray for all of us here at Grace as we enter into this new chapter in the life of Grace. These are the announcements uh, that I want to just bring to you this morning. Let's now continue praising our God with the opening song, Come, Let Us Worship and Bow Down. Thank you. 
Let us join together in our opening prayer for today. Let us pray. Dear Lord, the eyes of all look to you in hope, and you give them what they need. You open your hand and satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. We, too, turn to you again, longing to be filled to eat the bread of life, to drink from your life-giving streams, to taste your goodness and live. May the time we spend together in your presence nourish our hearts and minds. May it strengthen our relationship with you and renew our commitment to live in this world as your faithful disciples. For you alone are God, the source and sustainer of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The gospel lesson for today is from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27 and 34 through 35. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gotten into the boat with his disciples but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate, of, ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? When, what work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He who gave the, them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of the Lord. As we prepare to hear the message for today, we will sing, Be Thou My Vision.
great God of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright and sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever be still be Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to listen or to sing at our homes for the reading of your word this morning. And now as we prepare to listen to your word, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of those watching or listening and those of us gathered here together. We are listening ready to listen what you have to say to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to begin this morning, brothers and sisters, with an old and very familiar story about a couple of children who were lined up in the cafeteria of a Catholic school for lunch. And at the head of the table, it was this large tray of bread slices. The nuns posted a sign on the, on the basket that reads, take only, only one, God is watching. So as the children keep moving to the table, grabbing their food, and they get to the section of desserts, it was a large pile of chocolate chips cookies. So one children whispered to another, take all you want, God is watching the bread. I am the bread of life. We listen in the Gospel of John, Jesus saying, stating, I am the bread of life. So this morning we begin the series of Jesus' statement of I am, followed by a, by a metaphor, something that the people is familiar with, something that they can relate to, and we know that's Jesus' style. So in the Gospel of John, there are seven statements with the word or the words I am, and we will explore those seven statements beginning today and for the next few weeks. And one of the things when we listen, where we hear, when we read the statement, I am, it really takes us back to the Exodus when God is talking with Moses or Moses is talking with God and God is giving this task to Moses to deliver the Hebrews from captivity. So Moses has been sent to the elders of the Hebrews, and Moses has have this question. If they ask me who sent me, who am I going to say? And, and God tells him, tell them I am sent me. I am who I am. And now we found Jesus in the Gospel of John, beginning with those words, I am, and then he adds for today's theme, the bread of life. See, Jesus is actually saying, I am God. God is here. He is with me. I am with him. We are one. God is made flesh, and it is right here in front of you. And so just to get a little bit of the context, why Jesus says, I am the bread of life, it really starts in John chapter 5 with the feeding of the 5,000. 
which we know, and the scripture tells us, they were no 5,000 5, people. They were 5,000 men, not counting women and children. So we don't know the exact number, but the scripture lays to let five, the feeding of the 5,000. And after the crowd is being fed, the disciples go in the only boat that is by the shore towards Capernaum. And Jesus does not go with the disciples, but he goes up to the mountain to pray, which is something that he does often. Now the crowd witnessed all that. There is a storm as they're going through the, through the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum. And they also, the scripture tells us that Jesus walks on the water to meet the disciples. So the crowd witness that it's only one boat. Jesus does not get on it, and the disciples left. So during the night, more boats come, the scripture tells us, from Tiberias. Because of the storm, they got to come to the shore until the storm passes. So the crowd now who has grown gets on the boats and follow where the disciples went and, and looking also for Jesus. So when they found Jesus in Capernaum with the disciples, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Because they saw he was not with them. But Jesus does not answer the question. I mean, what's new? With Jesus. Actually, he lets them know their real intentions. He says, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Then he continues, Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. So now the crowd is, okay, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God. That you believe in him whom he has sent. And this is where the debate begins. This is where the crowd start questioning Jesus again. They say, okay, if you are the one, what sign can you give to us? What works are you performing? So they already miss the, the feeding of the 5,000. They already miss Jesus walking on the water. They're not focused on the actual sign of Jesus providing the bread. And then go like, because you know, our history, our past, tells us that Moses fed us, fed our ancestors with manna from heaven. So they're trying to see if Jesus is the real thing. Jesus is like, all right, guys. Let me clarify something to you. Moses did not fed your ancestors. It was my father who made bread come down from heaven. And Moses was the venue, was the messenger to Point out to you where the bread will be for you or for your ancestors. But my Father in heaven is the real giver, not Moses. And the Father right now is giving you the real bread from heaven. He's talking about himself. So the cross says, give us that bread always. That's when Jesus responds, I am the bread of life. See, this statement, I am the bread of life, is not a big statement for us today in 2020. 
because when 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 we think about bread, let's think for a minute here in the United States. When we think about bread, bread, it's part of our meals. It's not a big deal. It's it's like every day or most of our days when we have lunch or dinner. See, when we go to restaurants, they bring us a basket of bread and we can take it or leave it. And we can eat it or not eat it or we can ask for more and it's free. So the bread is, is like an extra thing. It's like a freebie. Most of the restaurants, especially the steakhouse, Will give, you, will give you their own signature bread. And it's free, like Outback and um, Olive Garden. Olive Garden gives you uh, the bread free, but you have to now purchase a meal. Before, it was not the requirement, but now you have to, um, because I guess many people were just going for the free bread and salad, so they changed their policy. But once you order your main course, they will bring you bread as much as you want, right? One of my favorite restaurants is Cracked Barrel. Cracked Barrel, every time I, I see Cracked Barrel, I associate it with, with vacation, with time of rest. And I love to eat there. And, and I haven't been there in a long time, but they used to, or they still do, give you free biscuits. My goodness, warm biscuit. You taste the butter. See, it's early morning. I haven't had breakfast, and I'm getting hungry right now. But they, they give you all this bread. So here in the United States, it's like an appetizer. It's like a side dish. And most people, or many people, don't go to the restaurant just for the bread. We go because we want the steak, the ribs, the salad, the pasta whatever it is on the menu of those restaurants. So it's not a big deal for us when we, when we hear Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. But in Jesus' time, bread was the main course, was the main thing for them to survive. That was their main food. Without bread, then people will be in trouble. When I went to Israel in 2010, and I went to this, uh, it looks like a, a elementary school, and it was like a recess, all the children will come out and they will be eating lunch and they will eating bread. And that's all they were eating. It was pita bread. So for them to hear I am the bread of life has a big impact. And in the Bible, we, we hear the word bread more than 300 times. So, when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, this declaration, this statement creates division, creates tension among the crowd and even with the disciples, because now they start fighting. They don't accept this. Very few actually accept this declaration, and we will see it along Jesus' ministry, but the majority will go away. The proof is that at Jesus, uh, when he's at the cross, there is only few people with him. But in the midst of all the conflict, here standing before them, before us, in the flesh, is Jesus, the fullness of God. And my brothers and sisters, we have access to it. Jesus himself is the gift from God that gives us life. It's not as a side dish, but as the main part of our existence that's going to help us carry on in our life. I don't know about you, but one of the things that really stressed me, and, and, and I got very tense, and, and if my wife were, were here, she will not let me lie about it, um, but what it stressed me 
is when we are, my family and I, we are on the, on, on the street, and we decided to go and buy fast food through the drive-thru. It's very stressful for me to go to the drive-thru. I, I don't know. I think the speaker, the person behind the speaker is very threatening. So when we prepare to go to one of these fast food restaurants and we're going to use the drive-thru lay, I, tell, I say to my wife and I turn to my children and then I said, okay, everybody needs to tell me exactly what they want. But it's more like a threat. Everybody needs to tell me exactly, because when I get to the window, I don't want to hear anything. And, and so we collect what my son, my daughter wants, my wife. And then I, when, when we're getting to the, to the speaker to order our meals, I said to everybody, now, I want everybody quiet. I don't want to hear any sound. Because now it's me and the speaker. And you know... When, when you get to, to, to the drive-thru where is the little speaker there, most of the time you get, good morning, welcome to whatever the store, how can I help you? Right? So I'm ready to remember everything that they just told me. I have to remember they want ketchup, they want mayonnaise, they want pickles, no pickles, they, they, what kind of drink, and how many nuggets, or, or whatever. Now, I'm focused on the whole menu that I'm going to order, and it just drives me crazy. When I get there, and the person on the other end, it starts with, welcome to so-and-so. Would you like to try this and this and that? And I'm just trying to shut myself off so I won't forget the menu. And then, when I order, I finish, right? Everything has gone smooth until... The person of the other end says, is there anything else I can get for you? I say, no, that's it. And then they say, so would you like to add an apple pie to your order? Or would you like to add a Hershey chocolate pie to your order? And the back of my car begin the, yes, dad, yes, can we get one? Yes, please, can we? See, my whole process got interrupted. My whole plan. And you know what I have ended up doing? I end up saying, Lucy, you take the order. When we pull in, you talk to the speaker. And you just talk loud. So make sure you got the whole order. I'm not going to get into this. It's very stressful. I don't know if you have experienced those, those things. You know, sometimes I wonder, and I'm thinking about it, if Jesus will be here, sitting here on the pews, or sitting at your homes, and, and start hearing the way we sing, our singing, uh, our sermon, my sermons, uh, everything we do in ministry, I was, I was wondering, will Jesus be tempted to say to us, would you like to add some God to that? Our days are so busy these days. We are very busy with this virtual learning, and teachers don't have a break, and, and the students try to figure it out. Moms and dads become teachers that they were never trained for. And then we start reopening uh, music schools, sports, and we have to do groceries, and we have to visit this person so we don't lose contact, and we have to do ministry at the church, and then we have to help this other person. And then we have to do our work. <sighs> Sometimes, Jesus might want to stop us and say to us, in all that you do, in everything you're doing, your activities, would you like to add some God to that? Because, by the way, I'm not the side-ish. And have the salad that you can just leave there in the corner. I am the main thing. Would you like to add some of that to your life? I am the bread of life. I am what you need, what you're looking for. I am the answer to your spiritual and emotional need. I am what you need every day, every morning, 
every night. I am the source and assurance of eternal provision for your life. I am. The story is told, and I begin to close this morning our, our, our message, that as uh, World War II was coming to an end, the Allied armies gathered up many hungry orphans, and they were placed in camps where they were well cared for and fed. But despite of being cared for, the children slept very little. They seemed nervous and afraid. So finally, a, a psychologist analyzed the situation, went to the camp and spent some days there. And as a result, each child was given a piece of bread to hold on after they were put to bed. Now, this particular piece of bread was just to held, but not to be eaten. The piece of bread produced great results because the children went to bed knowing in their minds that they will have food to eat the next day. That security gave the children a restful and relax sleep. Brothers and sisters, today we don't need to hold a piece of bread to warranty a restful night. We don't need any signs. We just need to believe in Jesus, the bread of life, and come to him and we will never be hunger or thirst again. It is not easy to follow Jesus. But if we don't want to experience any more of this hunger or thirst that is emotional and drains us, he is the only one we need to choose. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, each time and every day we come to you and we come with many needs. We need sustenance, we need clothing, we need food. Sometimes we need friendship, companionship, and we need love. You tell us to share our needs with you you tell us to ask for the fulfillment of our needs. You ask us to talk to you about the many hungers that we want so desperately to be filled. And yet, when we get what we want, we only feel satisfied for a moment. We often fail to offer thanks. And we move on to the next thing we feel we must have. We need many things, and we always will. But we so often fail to recognize that we need you the most. So help us to come to you first and foremost, seeking to have your love, to have a sense of your presence in our lives. This morning, be with those that we love, with those who mourn, and we ask that you heal the sick, that you bring peace to our nation. Inspire us in our work as community of faith and help us to reach our community with your gospel and your love. Bless our nation and help us to be the people of love, justice, and peace. For we ask all these things in the name of your Son, the true bread of life, who first taught us to pray. And we pray this morning, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come to the time in our worship service when we offer our tithes and our offerings to God. And once again, we want to thank you for all the offerings and tithes you have sent to Grace Church 
either by uh, online or by mail or dropping them to the main office, we want to thank you. It is because of all your contributions that we were able to prepare for re-entry next Sunday by purchasing all the signs you will see, the different hand sanitizer that is going to be around the building, extra masks for those of you who may not have it, and of course, disinfectant products to sanitize our sanctuary as we worship together. So we want to thank you for that. All that is possible because of your obedience and your generosity towards God and the people of grace. So thank you. We invite you and encourage you to continue to, if you feel comfortable, send your offerings or tithes online, mail them, or just drop into the church office. You know the hours of the office, and there is always someone here for you. And as we receive your offerings, we will continue to do ministry here at Grace. So let us pray for our offertory. Lord, you have entrusted us with the awesome task of sharing the message of the gospel. We acknowledge that we cannot simply give money and expect your message to be spread. We must consistently give ourselves by offering our time, talents, gifts, and service. We stir within us the courage to be Christian stewards through our daily living. Accept our gifts as a symbol of our love and commitment to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, it's you satisfy the hungry heart.
My sisters and brother, Jesus satisfy our hungry hearts. It has been a blessing to be with you on this Sunday. Our service has ended, and we are very excited that next week, some of you we will worship in person. Just remember and don't forget to RSVP. And as you go on this day, on this Sunday, may the blessing of God, the Father, the love of the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.